Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I have two things I want to show you. First off, as you probably know, in one of the videos in the 3D Game Engine series, I showed you how to make a very basic OBJ loader. And again, I mean a very basic one. It loaded positions and handled that just fine, but it couldn't really handle anything else. You couldn't load, say, well, you could load anything, I, sh I shouldn't say that, but you couldn't load texture coordinates, you couldn't load normals, and, well, it wasn't complete, ultimately. So, in this video, I want to show you something. It's a complete OBJ loader. It loads in textures, it loads in normals, it calculates missing normals if they don't exist, and does it seamlessly, it doesn't have any ridiculous seeming artifacts from texture coordinates and whatnot. And it's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. So, if we go ahead and run, this is showing you... Oh, well, this is a very basic one, actually. This is this one only has... Well, I shouldn't say it's very basic. This has 25... 250,000 polygons in it. But I actually want to show you the more intense one. The one with over a million polygons. And if I run... Oh, struggling with this one. Taking two seconds. And, hey, there you go. So as you saw, the one with 250,000 took a little over a second, and this one took a little over five seconds. So it scales roughly linear linearly. It actually scales linear rhythmically. So it scales beautifully, and it's pretty fast, believe it or not. I know you might be thinking, well, five seconds is kind of slow for loading a model. you got to keep in mind, one, this is a million polygons. That's going to be slow no matter how you store it. Two, this is, well, it's 56 megabytes of data, but I don't think that's the important part. The important part, though, is that it's actually performing a whole bunch of mesh optimizations. It's doing everything it can to make sure no vertex goes re... Er, yeah, no vertex is reused in the vertex buffer. It's going out of its way to make sure all the indices are optimized. And yeah, it's performing a whole bunch of mesh optimization. And it's actually generating two meshes. And, well, one's for calculating the normals so that you can get a very... It can calculate a perfectly smooth normal for every vertex. The other one's the one that actually has all the proper data. And it maps the ones from the normal calculated one onto this one. That's to avoid seeming issues. I'll talk more about that when I show you how it works, but yeah. So, I guess, just wanted to show you this, because it turned out being a lot harder than I actually expected. As you see here, it's divided into four stages. The loading and parsing, which is basically what we have right now. There's building an index lookup, which is an optimization technique. It's, built, it's pre calculating some things so we can look them up, and that's always nice. Then there's a time actually building the meshes, which still takes a fair bit of time, even with the optimization, but believe me, this is light years beyond where it would be if it was any other way. And of course, finally, it has to calculate the normals and do all that stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that because, well, I know, it's finally done. And, well, of course, I'm going to be showing you how to do that in the 3D Game Engine series. Not in the next section, though, in the section after next, which is all about, well, you can read about it in my About section. I have all that stuff posted there. And yeah. And actually, yeah, why not? I'll, I'll leave this up just to give you something to stare at while I ramble on about nonsense. Because, unfortunately, I've come to bring this up relatively late. Be because my break's almost over, and I may not have time to, to do a whole lot about this now. But... I just wanted to bring up the idea of what if I did a side series on modern OpenGL in C++ to talk all about GLSO, all about when you should use modern OpenGL, when you should use old-style old OpenGL, how you should mix them if you should. Here's the hint, the answer is no, but I'll talk about that in, in the series, if you like it. And yeah, and the reason I bring this up, well, partially, well, one's reasons because a lot of people have asked me about it, but the other reasons because of the DirectX series. I looked into doing that, and, well, it seems interesting in its own right, but there's an enemy lurking in the shadows, and that enemy is DirectX 12. Well, 
It might not be X DirectX 12, Microsoft actually has another thing it's working on that might replace that, but the whole point is DirectX 11 is going to be obsolete relatively soon, and why do a whole series on a proprietary technology of all things, which is going to be obsolete relatively soon? Not much point to it. So, I appreciate that there's interest in that, in, I appreciate that there's interest in that, but, well, there's that. I'd rather not do a tutorial that'd be obsolete in a couple months. So, yeah. And yeah, just, so, that's what I wanted to bring up. Other than the DirectX thing, just, what do you think of doing something on modern OpenGL? Again, wouldn't be very in-depth. It wouldn't be the 3D game engine series, well... I shouldn't say it wouldn't be in-depth. It wouldn't be branching out into, here's how you do game programming. It wouldn't be really... It would be like the 3D game engine series. It would be focused on modern OpenGL, how it works, when you should use it, when you shouldn't use it, when, when you should do what, what all the functions specifically do in the hardware, you know, that type of things. And, of course, in C++, because a whole bunch of people want me to do stuff in C++ for some reason. Eh. Either way, I think I'm rambling at this point, so hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and, well, I'll see you next time.